Hi everyone, we're back. I'm Editor Bill, and over the break, I read this biography of Charles Dickens. He's my favorite novelist, and Bill said to me, why don't you take the hosting on this one? I thanked him, and here we are. Let's get into it. But real quick, please take a moment to like, subscribe, comment, and take a look at the links in the description below for our Patreon and merch. We have a lot going on these days and we would love to have you join us. And with that, let's get to the book. Written by Fred Kaplan, this 515 page biography is the story of arguably the best or at least the most well-known novelists and writers of the 17th century Britain. But he was more than that. Over the course of his career, he was a reporter, owner and editor of periodicals, a Shakespearean actor, along with acting in his own work and doing readings of his novels, and a champion of copyright reform, both in Europe and the United States. He was also a husband and father, although he didn't really like his wife that much, and he got along better with his daughters than with his sons. According to Kaplan, one could even argue that he invented modern Christmas with A Christmas Carol and his other Christmas stories. He was a tight-fisted hand at the grindstone, screw- Boy. This really is a dirty city. <laughs> You're telling me. I've read just about all of Dickens' work, but I didn't really know much about his life. Thanks to this book, I now know a lot. That, of course, is the point to a, a biography. Kaplan dives deep into the life and times of Victorian England, what it was like to grow up during that time. For Dickens, growing up meant being dirt poor at best with an alcoholic father constantly in debt and a mother who essentially abandoned him. As Kaplan goes through Dickens' life, he makes a very interesting analysis of how Dickens' childhood and upbringing affected his work. In particular, David Copperfield seems to be his most autobiographical work. The main character's childhood and growing up in the novel has many similarities to Dickinson's life. And if you look at his female characters overall, David Copperfield specifically, they are not very nurturing or pleasant, much like in his mind, his mother and his wife. Despite everything he got out during the process of writing the novel, he never fully let go of his childhood and took it with him to the grave. But this is not just about the people, but also wanting to never go without money. Growing up severely poor, Dickens was what we would today call a walkerholic. Working on multiple projects at a time, constantly trying to negotiate the best deal. This continued even after he became wildly rich and famous. The book also includes many pictures of the people and places discussed in the text. To me, the best biographies will always do this as it fills out the life being told. And here's just a sample of that. Kaplan puts his research to good use giving us all kinds of little details on the events, people, and places in the book. He brings us along with Dickens as he explores Italy, France, and eventually the United States, twice, discovering the food, drink, and even clothing the people wore. He lets us in on the planning of Dickens' reading tours and how his novels are first laid out as monthly installments then eventually published as full books. Now, of course, there are other biographies of Dickens out there, and this is the only one that I've read. But in my opinion, there's no need for any other. 
Fred Kaplan does a great job introducing us to the man and his times. And we'll leave it there for today. Please let us know down in the comments your favorite Dickens story. Bill will be back next week. Thanks for watching and have a great day.